In this next series of lessons, we're going to be taking a look at the accounts payable processes within X3. To start, we're going to take a look at the supplier BP invoice function, where you can go in to enter in your non-purchase order related invoices and credit memos. We'll take a look at some of the open item management functions within X3. After that, we'll take a look at the uh, payment proposal process, which can be utilized to generate your weekly check runs. Uh, we'll take a look at to how to print the checks, then finally how to run the bank posting routine to update your AP subledger and your general ledgers. So to start off, we're going to come under our APAR accounting, then to the invoicing block, then under this option here for su supplier BP invoice. In here, we're going to start by clicking the New button. We'll specify our financial site that we want to utilize. In the Invoice Type field, we're going to come in here and specify the REG to designate it as being a regular invoice. Uh, some other options that you would use in the context of a supplier BP invoice uh, would also be the CRM option to designate credit memo. The document number is going to be the system assigned voucher number, so we're just going to tab through that field. Your accounting date is going to um, govern the posting date of your item. In your, in your supplier field, you can go ahead and put in the supplier's account number. You could click on the magnifier here to look up the account if you wish to. Your control account is the designator of what uh, GL account is going to be credited on the transaction. Down here on the header tab, we have this um, document origin date. So this is going to be the invoice date off your supplier's invoice. The original document number is your supplier's invoice number. The currency that the invoice should be entered in on. If it's entered in a non-ledger currency, uh, your exchange rate would manifest itself in these blocks here. We'll go ahead and we'll enter this invoice for $2,500. Down here in this invoice number field, if we were entering in a credit memo into the system, the original um, voucher number that uh, the credit memo should correspond to can be specified in this block here. In X3, uh, depending upon how your parameters are set up, uh, can automatically match your credit against that invoice. Here's the account number to which the payment should be made. The payment address. Your due date basis is going to default to this uh, or origin date. Your payment terms will default in from your supplier, as well as if you have any early payment discount, that will uh, pop into this field. So if you're entitled to maybe like a 2% discount if you pay within 10 days, that's going to manifest itself in this field. Um, X3 is going to take your due date basis, add the payment terms to automatically calculate a due date for you. We have some comments fields here. We have three different comment lines. Whatever is specified on the first comment line uh, will present itself on the remittance slip uh, when you send the check to the supplier. Lines two and three here are internal comments. We have uh, 1099 information that can be captured uh, in here on the invoice. And again, this will default in from uh, your supplier setup. Next, over here on our Lines tab, this is where we come to to specify our GL accounts and our analytical dimension information. So here on the line, we'll start by clicking in the Site field. We'll tab over to this uh, field in which our account number is defined. So in this case, we have a miscellaneous expense uh, account that pops up. So this is the default account that's associated with the uh, respective supplier accounting code. If you wanted to choose a different account, you could either, if you know your account number, you can just overtype it there, or you can click on the magnifying glass here and choose from among these other accounts. 
Okay, this line is titled to a settlement discount. Your amount field, we're going to allocate the whole $2,500 on this line. Your purchase type designation here can either be just purchase or fixed asset. Your comment field here, again, this is going to be an internal comment that you can define on the line. Then over here we have some um, different what we call analytical dimension fields. So these are the different means by which we can, can compartmentalize this expense. So for instance, if I wanted to book it to the miscellaneous expense, say in the commercial department, I could go ahead and choose that cost center code. Then from there, if there was additional market segments, products, or projects that I'd want to book the expense against, I could declare it through those dimensional fields. Okay. So once I have all that data entered in the system, I'm going to come over and click on the Create button. The Create process will run, and it will go ahead and assign a document number to it. So this is your internal voucher number. Okay, so if I come back here to the header tab, one thing to take note of here um, is we have our status field. Okay, so at this point, uh, the status of the voucher is of a to validate status, meaning that it hasn't been posted yet. To post this activity, there's a couple different ways by which I could do it. Uh, one way would just be to come over and click on the post button, and I'll go ahead and I'll do it like that in this case. The process runs its course. We get an indicator here that that voucher has now been uh, validated. I'm going to close page here, and I can come back here, and now I can see that my status reads validated. Okay. Now another way by which I could have posted that item is under the invoicing block here. Uh, we have this function right here validate supplier BP invoices. So this would be the batch posting routine that can be executed. So um, many organizations, they'll go ahead and they'll run, enter in all their uh, AP vouchers um, throughout the course of the day. Then at the end of the day, they'll go ahead and use this um, function just to post all that activity in mass. So to do this, for instance, you could go ahead and just run this for your own user ID. Then down here, maybe in your start and ending date fields here, you could go ahead and specify the today's date for the items that you want to post. Then you just come over here and click on the OK button, and X3 will uh, seek to post all unvalidated or two validated items. Okay, So let's go back under the supplier BP invoices function. And while we're in here, let's also take a quick look at how to do a credit memo. So in this case, we're gonna, we'll use the same supplier. So I'm going to do a new. Again, specify my financial site. In my invoice type field here, I'm going to come in and specify the CRM to designate credit memo. Got the accounting date. Specify the supplier account number. Okay. This is where you put your credit memo number in. Okay, so let's say this is maybe for $1,500. Okay, here in the invoice number field, this is going to give you a register of all the invoices that we have out there uh, for the supplier. So I could go ahead and choose that voucher number that I just entered. Okay, so in the comments field here I could say um, incorrect billing invoice. And that will show up on the remittance slip once again. Here on the lines tab again we'll do the site. We got our miscellaneous expense for fifteen hundred dollars. And just like we did on the invoice, we can also book it against the cost center or market segment. And just like before, we'll come here 
and do a create, then a post. Get an indicator here that it's going to validate the credit memo. Then we'll subsequently get a log file indicating to us that that has been posted through. Okay, so those are the two main aspects in this lesson of entering in a um, standard supplier BP invoice as well as the respective credit memo.